The Finance Minister must ensure education is properly resourced. That's the call from Equal Education ahead of this afternoon's budget speech. It says too many schools still don't have running water, safe and dignified toilets, as well as classrooms. Equal Education General Secretary Nongleba Madube Dube joins us live now. Good morning, Nongleba, and thank you very much for your time. Now, the education portfolio many would say, has consistently received the lion's share of the budget, albeit insufficient, of course. But COVID emerged and funds had to be reprioritized. Perhaps firstly paint a picture for us of what learning and teaching conditions still exist to this day, which prompted your call for more prioritization. So it's no secret. Um, over the past two days, media has been covering quite prominently the impact and the expectations around budget for 2022. And the first thing to explain to folk is that the budget speech must be pronounced today is also sort of a long-term project, right? It's a budget um, that's been proposed to the country and a framework that's going to last us a period of three years. And so, so we are looking for something that has circumstances that can affect a whole cohort of young people inside a secondary school education system, for example. No? So we can't take these kinds of instances lightly. The second thing is that while people have been touting over the last two days the need for structural and stimulated growth and economic growth in the country and the impact that's had socially in our communities, that, that is case in point and the, and the very same picture that's painted inside of our, of our schooling environments. So the inequality, the poverty, the hunger, the deprivation, the apathy in the streets of South Africa socioeconomically are the conditions we find inside of our schools. So the education system is deeply unequal, further exacerbated by COVID-19. We've had glaring circumstances where we've seen the impact of poor infrastructure in the way schools are able to go back into a normal sort of timetable and condition. So what we know right now is that schools, predominantly schools in rural and township contexts, are struggling to make ends meet because they have insufficient, undignified and unsafe infrastructure, the physical school buildings. They aren't able to accommodate learners coming back into a full timetabling um, sort of process, normal schooling, as we call it. And uh, um, there's still schools that only have access to plain pit latrines as a sort of source of uh, sanitation, who have, uh, are struggling with water security, who are struggling with school budgets. Um, is a phenomenon that we're understanding coming out of the rural and township context in particular. Schools aren't able to make ends meet because what's been cut from the National Department's education budget is affecting and trickling down to what provincial education departments, regions and circuits and ultimately schools are experiencing on the ground. So principals and school governing bodies are having to make trade-offs between electricity, printing facilities, school furniture, and the school nutrition program, for example. And these are the conditions principals have been reporting to us over the past couple of weeks. And so when equal education is sitting here and saying, we agree with the country, we do need to stimulate growth. When we talk about education and the basic education system in particular, we're pushing government and the national treasury to think about stimulating growth in the country for the long haul. An investment that is deliberate in the education system, it is vastly and deeply unequal. That's why we can still say we've got about 78% of young people in grade four that cannot read for meaning. The conditions in school aren't conducive to ensure that learners can become fully flourished individuals and young people in the future. So right, we need to think right. about that quite deliberately as for of, of, of the stimulating of the growth process. All right. So what I'm getting you is that the stimulation, the overall stimulation of the economy means prioritizing education, which speaks to investing in the long term economic growth of the country. But insofar as COVID is concerned, you touched there on how much it exposed us, be it on the limitations insofar as infrastructure is concerned, even technologically, because that rotational learning had to be implemented purely because we lacked the technology to allow for a hybrid system. Now they've gone back to school. We've got children back in school on a full-time basis. But do you not foresee a situation here where the department neglects the opportunity to fast-track developments around some sort of hybrid learning for the future? Because really COVID revealed what should be the way we engage going forward. Yeah, but so our infrastructure is not there yet. And we need to start going back to basics. So this is what that moment of COVID taught us. So it, it seems that the Treasury and the government, while they speak about a blended learning approach and learning from COVID, advancing technology in schools, the reality is that in the, on the ground, so to speak, or in school communities, that isn't what the school needs at the moment. What the school 
critical need is the bringing back of the 4.4 billion rand that was cut from school infrastructure projects. We need um, the school grants, the money that's ring fenced to make sure that we can in fact build schools, put furniture inside of these schools. Um, the, it's 1.7 billion rand that was cut in the year 2020. All of those amounts of money need to come back into the schooling system to allow schools to be able to orientate and create a better conducive environment for learners to still grasp and have re real conducive instructional time with their teachers. So part of the reason schools in the context we are working were so happy um, uh, for some time with the rotational timetable, because for the first time, some learners were sitting in a classroom with 35 learners. And that was a phenomenal because our schools typically sit in classrooms of 60 plus learners. We have a massive overcrowding crisis, both in the urban and in the rural context. So while it's good to think about technological advances that allow for a blended and hybrid learning approach, our, ba our, our basics inside of schools are, are quite fragile and volatile. And so we really do need an investment in making the schools what a get the necessity you right depend. first. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, Ngata, what a bleak picture you actually paint for those that wanted to have a conversation around technology. Clearly, you say we're nowhere there. We're nowhere near there. We need still the basics in some schools where it's just sanitation, it's just infrastructure. We need bigger classrooms, never mind the technology where in the private schooling system they would be talking hybrid learning. You're saying the basics. Can we have toilets? Thank you very much for your inputs. Hopefully, the minister does prioritize the education. And as you say, this is an investment for long-term economic growth. Thank you very much. That was Equal Education's General Secretary, Nungaido Mdubedube.